Welcome to Candid Africa, truthful and unapologetic. Well, as we have not spoken to you about this, it's a good question. Stevie Wonder said in the press recently that he wanted to move to Ghana. Now, now those of us in the room that know Stevie personally, he says this thing many times through the years that we've known him. Uh, but this last time he said it, what he said, he said, I'm moving to Ghana so that I can be uh, valued and respected more. It's almost exactly the phrase he used. And, you know, you got to think as a black American, who amongst us is more valued or respected than Stevie Wonder? And the idea that he would feel this way at this stage in his life and mm -hmm. in his career he goes on to say, uh, I, I would do this for my grandchildren so that they don't have to worry about that, which is a very ominous thing to say because clearly this is going to last for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And to see him decide to make that move, I wanted to go. Because I look at Stevie, I do, I look at Stevie as he's the soul of American culture. And man, if the soul leaves the body, then this thing will, is dead. Mm -hmm. I understand. And I, I go, I'll follow him over there. Or I'll go myself. I'll do it for him. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yes! Save in Africa! So we love that. I called Naomi immediately. He did. You put me in contact <laughs> with David Adjai. David Adjai, for those at home, is a very respected architect, considered one of the finest on earth. And here in the United States, he did uh, the Smithsonian Museum of African American History, which is sacred ground as far as Smithsonian's yeah. go for black people. And he designed it, and, and, and they always he put him in touch with me, and so we've been working together. Hopefully I'll build something there. That's gonna be beautiful. But I'm definitely gonna at least rent something for the foreseeable future, and I hope to open a comedy club there, because oh, I heard there's be none. And I think, I think you gotta fun. tour all 54 countries. I would love to. That'd be amazing. You know, and I did that show in South Africa. I had never performed in Africa before. Uh, it was like, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles, like the crowd went crazy. Like, you know, and I've gotten a lot of ovations, but, but you know, the, the way they responded, the, how quickly they bought the tickets, you know, I was surprised that there would be that um, kind of interest. I know, I was not pretty surprised, but I think you're going to find that in the whole, across the whole continent, it's going to be that way towards you. And Netflix They've been has waiting all, patiently. Yeah, they have. I didn't know. Like, Netflix has all this data now that they share with me about where people watch me. And, and the viewership I have in parts of Africa are staggering. It's like- it, people, I'm not shocked. People I'm love not me. shocked. They watch me like I'm an action movie and I'm just telling jokes. They want more, want that, but to get you live, oh my goodness, you don't know what a blessing that would be to them. Yeah, and do you remember when Chris Rock years ago had done a special in Africa? And I even noticed watching his special how great the crowd was. I think he was in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that firsthand. You know what I mean? Because it's the best way to travel. Like you could go to a country and you could see things and maybe meet individuals, but entertaining roomfuls of people like crowds is a really good way to get to feel to feel what a place is like, what yeah. a culture is like, uh, a way you're different, a way you're the same. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm real lucky to have an opportunity or that kind of window to look in the world. And no, my mind's getting this this country, this country. <laughs> it's like there's so many. You have, I mean. It's true. There's going to be a. You got to film that. That's going to be an amazing I think I day of conquering Africa because it's it's going to happen. That's a whole other chapter, but it's going to be a beautiful chapter to see the people how they. I mean, if I you. start something over there too, those cultures have so much to say in this. You know, the the platform or, or the genre of stand up comedy is so uniquely American. I mean, they do it all over the world now, but it, it's an art form that started here, primarily. Mm -hmm. And But Africa, I feel like, is very fertile, fertile ground for comedy as a genre. Yeah, the little girl in Kenya, she's not little, actually, she's 20, called Elsa Majumbo. I met her on your FaceTime, right? Yeah. She was with you one night. Yes, she is. Oh my, she's getting her visa to come over from Kenya. Sweetest thing was when you say, say hello to my friend. And you told me she's a young comedian. I'll never forget how her face looked when she saw me on FaceTime. She's in shock. <laughs> yeah, it was so sweet, man. It, it made she me was feel in really total good. Shock. It would never dream though that there's some little girl in Africa that dreams of being anything like you. Well, there's so many. Yeah, wait, just you dope. wait. It was dope.
Did you like or hate what you heard? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more candid speeches like this, be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips or topics about Africa you'd like us to cover.